Hi, and well, I almost wanted to say welcome to week three. But this isn't welcome to week three. In fact, let me tell you a little secret. You don't have to watch this video to do everything that we require of you. But if you do, maybe you'll find some things a little easier. Let me show you a real well-kept secret in Snap. You remember when we showed you the blocks? We've got these jigsaw shaped blocks. They do something, like they make the sprite move. Then we also have these roundish blocks that go into the inputs. They tell you something, they report something, they return a value. And if you look at the top of the operators category, there are three gray rings in there. These rings is what I want to talk to you about. So they come in three shapes. And the inside of the rings look like blocks might fit in them. This is where a command block might fit in. And look what we're going to do. I'm going to make a little script. It's going to say, pin down. I'm going to repeat five times, move a little, and turn by, here's a magic number, 144 degrees. And then lift the pin up again. In fact, let's try this. If I click on the script here right now, the sprite drew a little star. You see the little star? So if I click on a script, I run it right away. Now I can pick up the script and drop it into a ring. Now I've got a ring with a script inside. And if I click on that script now, it is going to draw exactly nothing. Hey, did I just show you a bug in Snap? Script doesn't work anymore. Well, no. The idea is that once you've got a ring on a script, you've got the power to do lots of interesting things with that script. It's the one ring to rule them all. A ring keeps the script from running. Instead, what we get is the script itself. The script becomes a thing. That's a Latin word. A thing means res in Latin. And when we ringify something, when we put a ring around something, we reify something. We turn it into something that is a thing in Snap. Now, a thing in Snap means we can make a variable, my variable, and we can assign it to the variable. Now, when I have a script, I can't put that into the variable because it's not an input. But once it's inside a ring, I can put it into the input of the value. And I can assign the ring to my variable. And now my variable has become that script. So inside my variable now, that script is like a genie in a bottle. Hey, how can I get the genie out again? Well, there is a block for that. In the control category, there's actually three blocks for that. There's the run block, launch, and the call block. The run block suggests that you put a ring in there. Well, here's a variable that has a genie in the bottle. I'm putting that variable into the run block. And now if I click on it, watch what happens over here. It again executes the script. So the whole idea of a ring is I can package something up, stack it away for later use. Not much of a deal, you say. Well, let me just show you one little example. We can also make a list. 
and in fact we already have a variable and instead of assigning that script into it I'm going to say that my variable is going to be a list. It's an empty list. Now I can add things to the list. Like I can, for example, add the star script we just made to that list. The other way around. Add it to the list. Now I've got a list with a script inside. Let's do something more. Here's another script we can do. Just going to copy that. I'm going to say repeat eight times. Actually, I'm going to use the for block. I'm going to say pen down for i equals one to eight, move i, and turn 90 degrees. Now, when we do this, it draws a little spiral. I'm going to put that spiral script also into the ring and add it to the list. So now I have a list with two scripts. Let's just add some more things for fun. For example, let's add a single block that turns left by 45 degrees. It's there. Let's actually do another one that turns right by 45 degrees. And while we're at it, let's add one that doesn't turn at all, that turns by zero degrees. So now we have a list that has five blocks in it. Let's throw away these and write a little, very little script that does something. Actually, let's add one more thing. In the pen block, let's write hello with a size of eight. Let's try this. Nice. So we're actually going to put the pen up before, then we're going to write something, put the pen down, and let's also add that to the list. Here it is. Now let's write a little script. We're going to clear, put the pen down, and we're going to move 20 steps. Then we're going to run, but not my variable, because my variable is a list. We're going to run a random element, a random element of what's in my list. And to make sure we're not leaving the stage, we're saying, if you're on edge, bounce. See what we're doing here? Let's try this. I'm going to hide what's inside the list. I'm going to hide the watcher of the list, clear it, put the sprite in the center, and run the script. Oh, I forgot to say, we always want to do this. Wrap a forever block around this. Let's try this again. So now we're kind of making a random shape that draws interesting things. It kind of looks like a subway map um, and draws a different script that we've put away into the list. So the whole idea of the subway map example is that we have a list and inside that list are scripts. If we put a ring around a script, it becomes a thing. In computer science, this is called first class. If something is first class, it means it can be assigned to a variable. It can be assigned as a member of a collection, like an array or a list. It can be the argument into a function and the result of a function. And it doesn't have to have a name. It has, as we say, an intrinsic identity. Now, you've already seen one thing that's kind of cool about rings. We can put them into lists and run random things. But this week, we're really going to show you how rings and the idea of functions as data is one of the most powerful concepts in computer science that really opened the door to dealing with data. But don't tell anyone.